हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुबोध कुमार झा एंड ही वी आर विथ अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दिस टॉपिक इज रोल ऑफ लिटरेचर इन लैंग्वेज लर्निंग टूडे वी शैल एग्जामिन द रोल प्लेड बाई लिटरेचर इन लैंग्वेज लर्निंग सो द फोकस विल ऑल्सो बी ऑन वॉट इज लिटरेचर हाउ टू यूज लिटरेचर इन क्लास रूम and what objectives it would fulfill in language classroom the point is let's examine what is situation today literature is not treated as a separate subject in elementary classes mostly you will find that literature is included in language syllabus itself be it english hindi urdu or any language you will also find stories poetry essays in nearly all textbooks the question is why this inclusion what role it may play in learning a language we shall begin by saying that learning of lang language is different from learning subjects like history geography or physics because these are content subjects but unlike the content subjects skill subjects such as english deserve different treatment because in skill based subjects the objective is not to impart information or knowledge but to develop effective communicative competence and this communicative competence depends on the development of four skills all of you might be knowing the four skills listening speaking reading and writing for developing these four skills the important thing is that we need to create an environment of learning which the learner can feel affinity with a close bond should be established with the environment and the learners and here comes the role of literature that is why we use literature in language classroom because literature is rich resources of accurate diction diverse sentence patterns and passionate narratives we also find a very intimate relation between life and literature when we go through a literary text literature most of us will agree is an expression of man's thoughts in such a manner as to create great interest for readers so reading literature fosters critical thinking by offering readers multiple perspectives literature exposes the learners to the cultural varieties and enriches their experience it enhances ESL students knowledge of culture and society which is too complicated to be captured by any single piece of expository writing another important aspect of literature is that it introduces learners to a variety of types and difficulties of english language it provides learners an opportunity to explore the text from the perspective of a style and its relationship to content and form so different dimensions are there so we shall now just briefly discuss what is literature we have already discussed it in our discourse on what is literature so let's have just a brief uh, discourse on it we have already discussed that literature is a very comprehensive term and it can be informative it can be critical or it can be creative or imaginative anything that is written about anything comes under literature but that is informative literature then when we just talk about cause or effect relationship or give logical explanation then it is called critical literature but here we are concerned with the third category that is creative or imaginative literature because here 
we have a wonderful blend of language, communication, expression, cognitive value, moral value and above all, all aesthetic value. So, literature should be used for teaching language because it is very enjoyable to read. It is very motivating and more importantly, it is an authentic material. It helps students understand another culture. It provides a stimulus for language acquisition. It develops a students' interpretative abilities. It encourages students to talk about their opinions and feelings, so their communicative competence is enhanced. Another important thing is that literature contributes to the world knowledge. It raises awareness of different human situations and conflicts. In literature, we not just read, we get emotionally involved, intellectually involved. So, our emotions and intellect both are involved and this in a way adds to our motivation. This way, it also contributes to personal development. Literature also helps learners enhance reading skills. It encourages emphatic critical and creative thinking. Literature provides examples of different styles of writing and this is what only literature can do, the variety of styles. And it is also the representation of various authentic uses of the language. Language learning is not just a matter of using for day-to-day -day dealings. It is also knowing different uses of language in different situations and literature prepares us for that. It is also a good basis for vocabulary expansion. But the point is, even if literature is very important, what sort of literature should be used and how it should be used? because suitability of the text for different levels is very important. While using literature in a language classroom, we have to be careful about the level of the learners, the age of the learners. So, the introduction of literary texts must be from the familiar to the unfamiliar. When we talk about familiar text, definitely will be folk literature, folklores, folk tales, because learners are acquainted with, familiar with folk tales of their reason. So, it is better to begin with folk literature and gradually move on to the unfamiliar text. Another important thing is that the inclusion of literature should be from simple to the complex. We cannot give complex literature to a beginner. So, it must begin with the simple. For example, if we are dealing with the lower classes, class 1, class 2, so it is better to begin with picture story, showing the pictures and then motivating them to come out with responses in words, in phrases, in broken sentences and only then we can introduce actual literature. Our emphasis while including literature in language learning should be first pleasure. Emphasis should first be on pleasure and only thereafter we can move towards instruction. The same holds good to applying the criterion of speech. So, it should be basically for a speech first and then aesthetic consideration may be considered. Everything, whatever we do, must be in a graded order to ensure the instant acceptability of the literary text and their usefulness in language teaching. 
a learner feels a kind of affinity, a very close bond with the familiar text, if it is familiar and interesting both. So what happens when you ask the learner to respond, there will be no burden of information on the learner and the learner won't be forced into silence. So, beginning with literature is a good way to initiate them to speaking and then to reading and writing. Literature is important. The role of literature is important also because of the interplay between language and literature. It is this interplay that makes language teaching very useful. If we teach our learners a structure or sentences in isolation, we do not provide them anything to talk about. But if we tell them a story, they are very likely to talk about it on their own. If we devise something based on the story, our students will really respond and they will be encouraged to talk, to interact with each other with pleasure. And that is our purpose in a language classroom. Make them talk, make them do something. And literature provides us this opportunity. The learners will also relate the events in the story to their real life and thereby internalize the uses of given words and structures. So, Using literature is very important. But how to begin with literature? We should begin with small activities such as coloring or drawing or solving puzzles and riddles at the lower level. Because children will love them. They will lo love such exercises. And then gradually we can move on to vocabulary development. We can also bring in oral interaction, then written responses. All these things should be in a graded manner, very gradually. It's only afterwards, after four or five or six years of exposure, that we can talk about subtle uses of language. And then we can also give them project works but this can be done only at upper primary level or onwards because this will involve search for information, how to collect and then collect information and write well-knit pieces and present them in the classroom or class seminars. So while teaching literary texts with emphasis on linguistic features, it is important to draw their attention to such features. Let's take uh, an example. Sweetest love, I do not go. It's a poem by, the first line of a poem by John Dunn. Now, mark the rich implication of sweetest. It is adjective, superlative degree of adjective. Why has this superlative form of adjective been used here? If we pay attention to the subtle nuances, we will find that it dissolves three levels of meaning. It is a form of address. It also refers to the beauty of the beloved. And most importantly, it also suggests that the love between the two still exists. And that's why he calls her sweetest. Another example. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Now, look at the use of red twice. This repetition of red is very important. Why is there a repetition of red in the first line? Because our attention to the repeated use of red will help us explore that the simile suggests two things. First, it refers to the beauty of the beloved. Second, it refers to her shyness and her tender age. 
being at the threshold of youthfulness. So, just a simple word rate and repetition of it suggests such a wider range of implication. Rose is a commonplace use of a figure of a speech, but here it is suggestive of beauty, not only beauty, but also the use of red and that too in repetition adds to richness to this conventional use of simile. So we see literature comes with new, strange and unexpected language use, which a learner must be aware of. And only then he can understand the subtle uses of language and be able to use language in new way in new situation. It also helps learners to draw pleasure from literature. But this is not the end. He also knows the use of language. So literature serves two purposes. It provides pleasure to the learner and it also helps learn the use of language. Now, to explain these things, let's take up a complete literary text. And here I am taking up a poem by W. B. Yeats, The Lamentation of the Old Pensioner. The poem begins. Look at the poem. Although I shelter from the rain under a broken tree, my cheer was nearest to the fire in every company that talk of love or politics a time transfigured me. Though lads are making pikes again for some conspiracy and crazy rascals raise their feel at human tyranny, my contemplations are of time that has transfigured me. There's not a woman turns her face upon a broken tree, and yet the beauties that I loved are in my memory. I spit into the face of time that has transfigured me. A proper use of this poem in a language classroom will be using different stages. First, we need to contextualize it, and for this, we may use pictures of an old man with wrinkled face and a young energetic person or we may draw the same on the blackboard or whiteboard. We can also encourage students to point out the differences between the pictures. Ask students to tell who looks happier and also encourage them to tell why, why they think so? so? They must give reasons. Ask the students, prepare list of adjectives used for young and old people. We may ask our learners to talk briefly about age and time, the process of aging, the process of getting old. We may draw out the attention of our learners to the title and encourage them to make guesses about the theme of the poem. What does the word pensioner in the title mean? What does the word old in the title imply? Explain to the students what refrain and rhyming patterns are. That means which words have been repeated time and again. What is the rhyme scheme? What pattern is created by, dif by different endings of the lines? We may also discuss about the author, his biographical sketch, here the poet. Then, while teaching the poem, we may discuss different aspects of the poem asking questions related to understanding of the poem. First, read the poem or let a learner read it aloud. But reading has to be done. Encourage students to make their own inferences. Don't tell them that this is the meaning. Let them exercise. Let them make inferences. 
let them come ahead with different speculations, interpretations, subject and theme. Because this is the objective of using a literary text in a language classroom. Exercising the brain, interpreting, thinking critically and using language to express their arguments, express their ideas, express their feelings. Help the learners to come to the points like meaning of the title and its relation to a time transfigured me, the old man's past. Because these are the key words, they hold the uh, hold key to the understanding of the poem. Also ask them, well, does the speaker like his past? Because nowhere in the poem this is clearly stated. Also ask them, what are things that made his past interesting? What is his attitude towards his past? Why does he spit into the face of time? What does this spitting suggest about the mood of the speaker? Why is he angry? Show the contrast between his past and present. Try to find out the relationship between the vocabularies, e.g. between fire, love, politics, youth, and between shelter, broken trees, memory, and ease. Which part of the poem serves as refrain, that means which has been repeated time and again? What is its significance? Why this repetition? What is simile or metaphor? Ask them to find out. Ask them, can you find one in this poem? If yes, which is simile, which is metaphor? Is the speaker like a broken tree? In what way you can say that he's like a broken tree? You can also make them think and find out the information they can get from the following in terms of meaning and language. An aged man is but a paltry thing, a tattered coat upon a stick. Draw their attention to the keywords, aged man, paltry thing, tattered coat, and then upon a stick. Talk again about metaphorical use of language. Find out the words that serve the rhyming pattern. Why is time capitalized in the poem? Find out the cohesion in terms of sentences, tense, vocabulary, etc. I mean, if link has been established, if the link is there between sentences, tenses, vocabularies, how this link has been established. This is what we mean by cohesion. Also help them talk about some archaic words. That means words which are no longer in use now. For example, in this poem you will find hath, doth, er. When the reading of the poem is complete, the teaching is complete, then we have to conduct some other sorts of activities. It includes peer activities, group work, and this may be about what similarities or contrast do you find between your present and the poet's past? This way, a relation between the learners and the poet will be established. This will make them think, this will make them interpret, and this will also make them communicate. Also ask them to write a paragraph describing the poet's youth. And when they are talking about poet's youth, ask them to use past tense. And this will be exercise of tense. You may ask your learners, are you enjoying your youth? Are you afraid of age? That means getting old. This will help them think about the present situation and also guess what they will be in future. We can also ask our students to write about their childhood. And here, they should be asked to show contrast with their present youth or present stage of life.
You may also ask them to write what they used to do before coming to school. And now after spending some time in school, what they do. Do they enjoy their life and all that? Ask your students to tell what kind of language or sentence structure we use to show contrast between two states. So this will be an exercise in language. We may ask our students to fill the following boxes with different vocabularies that are relevant to the young and old man. So you can keep the table, young man and old man. For example, for young man, energetic, old man, weak, and they may go on writing adjectives for young man and old man. So this will be a practice in vocabulary. So this will help them develop their vocabulary. But, and here, a word of caution is needed. The activities presented above serve only as possible model activities. Only a few of these or other such activities may be used keeping in mind the age and level of the learners and the time slot that you have. The selection and use of different activities and presentation may vary depending on the suitability of the exercises. Whatever activities we design, the fact remains the suitable activities cannot only enrich linguistic competence, but they can also help the learners draw pleasure from literature. And this way, language learning becomes a joyful activity rather than a dull, monotonous language drill. So let's conclude now. We have seen that literature can play the most important role in teaching language provided linguistic complexities or are adequately analyzed or focused on. Literature can expose the learners to varieties of uses of words as well. It can also expose us to the structures for a specific purposes and thereby enrich their linguistic experiences. Linguistic competence, we all will agree, can help the learners understand a piece of literature in a better way. So it is two way. Using literature helps learners learn language in a better way. And applying linguistic approach to literature helps them understand and enjoy literature in a better way. We should also be careful in giving equal attention to develop all the four skills because only then it will help in fulfilling the basic objective of language teaching, which is making the learners proficient in communication. This is all for today, but we shall meet again in our next discourse. Till then, thank you and goodbye.